William Eklund really, really, really needs some help. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. Proudly part of the Locked on Network, we cover your team every day. And if you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts or you can watch this on YouTube as well. And today we're going to be talking about these Sharks' uh, 4-2 to two loss to the Nashville Predators and why William Eklund needs some better line mates. Mikel Granlin's worth as he, we head, head, head into the NHL trade deadline. And Shorehair and Barracuda continue to play well, but just don't have the horses right now. So um, before we get into all that, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Down the Sleeper app. Use promo code Locked On NHL to get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. William Eklund needs some help. Um, that's my yes. The Sharks lost four to two to Nashville Predators and. It was very typical Sharks fashion where they looked pretty good for they looked okay for the first period. Um, the second period was a complete no show. And then the third period was them scrambling to try to make things interesting again. But you cannot, you cannot, again, you cannot put Luke Cunning and Mike Hoffman on a line with William Eklund. One, okay. Both of them. Uh, just, just brutal. Like, I know we normally do the lines, you know, like when we dig into the numbers, we'll dig into the numbers here in a little bit, but William Eklund played with Luke Cunning and Mike Hoffman for 11.39 at 5v5 on Saturday night. They had three shot attempts and gave up 12. Two actual shots on goal and gave up seven. Um... Two scoring chances gave up nine and gave up two high danger chances. Um, like those guys do not like when you, you think about like you're trying to build lines and chemistry that complement each other, right? Those three guys just don't seem to work very well. And I, I can think of this one play in particular, right? Eklund gets the puck. Uh, one of the few chances where they get the, the, the puck in the offensive zone. Uh, he gets the puck, makes a great move, goes to kind of pass it, and there's nobody there. He just passes it to nobody because there's nobody with him on this rush attempt. Um, and that's that's kind of where the Sharks are at right now. They just they they need to find somebody to remember the whole, let's get William Eck on a friend. They need to find him a friend right now. And we'll talk about Zadina and Barabanov, who I thought had some of their best games. We'll talk about them here in the middle segment. Um, but Zadina in particular, like I, I talked about, you know, last week, should Zadina be playing in the top six and Zadina continues to play well. Uh, Zadina was an absolute monster. If he's got five points now in five games coming out of the break, um, but another goal, Great goal, able to kind of clean up there. Um, it's just, it's it's tough sledding right now for for William Eklund. And you know, I know first year, like first full season, like you don't want to, you know, like he still has things that he needs to work on, you know, and that's like his face offs, et cetera. Like we know that, right? We know that with Eklund, but we know exactly what Mike Hoffman are and Luke Cunningham are, right? And you're just, it's, you're not putting your young player in a position to succeed with these line mates. And again, I know the Sharks are so shorthanded right now with, when it comes to um, skilled players, um, healthy players anyway, but you, you gotta try to do something else to put your young, young player 
uh, in a position to to succeed. So um, we got to find William Eklund some help, whether it's Zadina, uh, maybe Barabanov gets another spin. I would like to try. I would love to see Zadina play more than a shift with William Eklund. Uh, I know they played one shift and it wasn't pretty when it came to actual like some of the analytics and stuff, but can we get them together for an extended period of time and at least see what happens when, when you play those guys together? Because yeah, poor echo. It's just, it's, it's remove the stone of shame and attach the stone of triumph for echo right now. Um, one player though, who's uh, very much pulling his, his stones of shame and triumph. No, Zettelin and, and Duclair are not shame and triumph, but anyway, uh, Granlin has continues to just, be awesome and especially that third period right first two periods that that line really kind of a little bit slow to kind of get things going uh but then mikhail granlin and the revenge game continues to to be um i mean you can make a really good argument i think that granlin is other than i'll take out the goalies because the goalies what they've done this year but you can make a really, really solid argument that Mikel Granlin has been the Sharks MVP this season based on his performance, his expectations going into this year. Um, again, remember, this guy was like literally like a, a thought to be a buyout candidate by, by the Penguins and a cast off by them um, and has been one of the most important Sharks for uh, this season. But um, Granlin... You're starting to see his names percolate more and more around the trade rumors as we're, you know, less than two weeks away. And um, I think the Sharks are going to have a, a big decision. I talked about it last week about um, kind of trade rumors, et cetera, et cetera, um, what the Sharks should do. But um, Granlin just, you know, he plays hard in the defense. You know, you can put him on the special teams. And, you know, I don't think he's the, the greatest defender, but I think he tries hard, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you know, he's, he's teams like him for, for what he does defensively. And you can see how he can kind of help carry a line. Um, you know, it's, it's very much a, um, uh, the penguins are down a goal. Sorry. Um, and the, that pick is looking better and better. Sorry, excuse me. Um, you can, you can see like how he makes his line mates better, right? Duclair with this speed, settling with that, that dog mentality, but Graylin's kind of the straw that stirs the drink in there. And if uh, I, our good friend Curtis kind of, you know, if Graylin does get traded and, and Kotor and Hurdle are out, like who else is going to play center? You have Eklund, who's played center in the NHL for 10 games now or whatever. Um, that's probably your 1C. Uh, at least he'll get to play with good players then. Um, Nico Sturm, Ryan Carpenter, and then it's probably Studnika, uh, who's been playing well with the Barracuda. We'll talk about the Barracuda at the end, but um, I'm curious to see, unless the Sharks get blown away with an offer for Granlin, if they do trade Granlin, because again, like you're really putting yourself in a tough uh, position. And again, very much team tank and the Sharks are working their way back into that number one spot as they're, uh, as I record this one point behind uh, Chicago right now, Chicago does have, uh, does have us played more games. So keep that in mind when you keep look at tankathon, the Sharks will, uh, by the time you hear this, the Sharks will be th uh, three games in hand. So that's something to keep in mind. The Sharks are schedule here gets a little bit busier down uh, in March, but um do you hang on to Granlin this off season and then maybe try to trade him during the summer where maybe you don't have to retain salary? Um, maybe you can have a little bit more people kind of looking into it. So I'm just kind of curious to see, or you just keep Granlin and bring him back next year because he's been so good for the sharks and has been, and then, you know, kind of ride it into next year and then he could be a big asset at the, at the trade deadline next year. So um, interesting what Greer is going to do, but uh, Granlin was a big reason why the Sharks kind of made this game interesting in the third period. Uh, but again, as the Sharks, it's always a little bit too little, too late. Um, but uh, three losses in a row now, and they play a struggling New Jersey team on Tuesday who is going desperately, desperately needs a win after they lost to the Lightning. 
Um, and then you play big game on Thursday against the Ducks, who have started to look a little bit better. Uh, then you got Dallas and Minnesota this weekend. Minnesota has been playing a lot better. Dallas is one of the best teams in the league. Um, so, we'll, you know, the, the Sharks could be get potentially getting themselves ready for a little bit of a run here. Um, so, yeah. Let's now and 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 if you check Chicago's schedule, it starts to lighten up here. They got to look like another week of, of hard games, but then it really starts to lighten up for for Chicago here. Um, so things could be looking pretty good for us here. So uh, we'll dig into the numbers of this game, kind of how these teams played uh, with Nashville. Um, kind of look at which lines performed well, all that fun stuff here in just one second. Our sponsor once again today is Camino Consulting. You've heard of our online families and uh, couples courses and taking advantage of the locked on 25% discount running to the end of the month. But what about the live seminars and both sport and businesses? Uh, the challenge in differentiating candidates and recruits is an endless battle. Everyone can demonstrate their measurables and qualifications, but we all know it is intangibles that matter when those are similar. Contact Camino Consulting for their team and management seminars to get a peek behind the curtain and watch your next recruiting class or hiring group become one of the most effective you've ever seen, both because you've identified the right candidates and because you've learned how to communicate and motivate them in accord with their preferences. But you aren't in the uh, business management or working with a team. We pay referrals, make sure money, uh, making your workplace and favorite teams better. Every group works together better at the end of the year, uh, year one than week one. So contact Camino Consulting at CaminoConsulting.ca and get on the fast track to understanding. All right, so let's dig into the numbers for this game. Um, fair amount of 5v5 time. Uh, sharks, of course, draw two of very sharks, right? You finally draw some power plays um, the first period, and then you just don't do anything with them. And then, of course, uh, Nashville gets three in this, uh, the second, and then the third period was kind of a little bit wild, a 5v5 time. But um, 49 minutes, 13 seconds of 5v5. Predators shot attempts uh, 58 to 41. So Corsi 4 of 58.59 to 41.41. And then we have uh, actual shots on goal was 28 to 20 in favor of the Preds. Scoring chances for 34 to 26. High danger chances for 12 to 9 in favor of the Sharks. So very interesting there. Uh, 2.52 to 1.82 expected goals for, of course, in favor of the Preds. Um, 2 to 2 goals at 5v5. But again, uh, special teams and an empty netter, uh, the different uh, for, the, for the Preds here. Um, Sharks. Again, they're, they're quality over quantity. And when you look at the shot map, like it is very much to the left side of UC Soros. Um, Mikhail Grandland with absolute beauty of a goal there, just right on UC Soros. Um, but, you know, this, this game is very much uh, the second period, I think, is kind of the big story of this game of just how little the Sharks were able to accomplish in the second period. Um, they had like. 11 shot attempts in the second period um actual shots you know at 5v5 that three they ended up with a little bit better they ended up with five altogether um but just like that second period when we've seen it from the sharks so many times where it's just you spend you know a half a period to, to two thirds of a period just not able to generate anything offensively um and that's just kind of that led to multiple power plays for Nashville because they're spending so much time in their defensive zone. Uh, the Sharks are spending so much time in their defensive zone. Um, and Nashville, whose power play hasn't been that great, but again, I don't care how bad your power play is. If you keep giving them chance after chance after chance, they're going to eventually convert. And I think that was kind of the big, the big takeaway from this game is just the Sharks' inability to get anything going um, in the second period. And then... Um, yeah, so just just that second period. So let's dig in on to the actual lines. So like we won't talk much about the Eklund line because I already talked about it in the first section. But the Zetterling Grandland Duclair line played 1042, 11 to 8 shot attempts. 
um, seven to five actual shots on goal. The crazy thing is just how much the third period, right? Um, I looked at this kind of after I like to look after each period um, just to kind of see how, how they're performing. Um, this line was getting like caved in uh, and then the third period, they really turned it on. Um, I think after the second period, if I remember correctly, it was something like they had, like two shot attempts. Um, it was like two or three shot attempts and they ended up out shooting their opponents 11 to eight. Um, so yeah, 11 to eight shot attempts, actual shots was seven to five did have that goal. 0.35 to point one expected goals for seven to three scoring chances for three to nothing high danger chances um, with four, four, three zone starts. Barabanov, Sturm, Zadina played 852, 16 shot attempts, gave up seven actual shots was seven to one, had the, a goal as well. 0.85 expected goals for 0.21 expected goals allowed 11 to five scoring chances, eight to one high danger chances um with five four two zone starts can we just put bear banov and zendina with eklund and then have cunning and hoffman with nico sturm on your third line um that's that that's what we want to see right zendina who's been playing much better bear banov who's had um easily to say one of the worst years of, of, of his professional career if not the worst year of his professional career um Great game, great game on Saturday night. Uh, I don't know if it was the rest, whatever it was. Um, those guys played well, and we can we see them? Can we see everybody rewarded, right? Except for, I guess, Nico Storm having to play with, with Cunning and Hoffman. But I know those guys they played a shift, it wasn't very good together, but like at least like get them some practice. Can we see the Bear Ben of Zadina Eklund because that that those guys are have a chance to at least do something. I think there are skill sets play off really well. Even if you go back to the summer, I talked about how Eklund and Zadina, I thought would have a really good opportunity if they played together because of Eklund's creativity and his ability to one generate space for himself and two generate opportunities for his teammates. And you see, I know Zadina is not going to be, um, there's always going to be those like shots where you admit like, man, I wish Zadina could have scored like right there, like so close Zadina, so close. Right. But Zadina's, you know, he's got eight goals this year, which is his second highest um, in his or tied for second highest. He needs two more goals um, to tie his career high of 10. Like, and he's been doing this on 12, 46 a night. Again, we're at this time of the season where things are, you're, you're trying to figure out what's going on for the rest of the year or going into next season. Let's get Zadina with Eklund and see what happens when those guys play together. If it's bad, it's bad, right? But um, the way Zadina's playing right now, the confidence that he's playing with, um, just that like he's just got, gotten into this kind of attack mode, which we have maybe didn't really, we saw for spurts, but we're kind of seeing it on a more consistent uh, basis from, from him. So uh, then we had Giovanni Smith. Welcome back. Uh, who hadn't played a game since before Christmas. Ryan Carpenter and Justin Bailey played 448. Uh, two shot attempts, gave up seven, uh, zero to six actual shots on goal. Zero expected goals, 4.59 expected goals allowed. Uh, two to five scoring chances, zero to two high danger chances. So, um, again, I, I think with Smith, you have to kind of give him a – he hasn't played hockey in basically two months. So, let's give him a couple games, see how he kind of gets himself acclimated into this system again. So, um, defensively, it was a little bit of a, a mess. Uh, Kalen Addison got benched for a good chunk of the first period, uh, came back in, um, and then he was him and Burroughs both kind of struggled when it came to the Corsi four. Uh, Henry Thrun actually led the team in Corsi four at 5v5, but um, kind of got walked on that one goal and he admitted where he kind of got stuck in no man's land of trying to be aggressive but just unable just kind of making the wrong read and not fully committing to either being aggressive and try to play the man or try to kind of step back and he got stuck in the middle and uh Kiefer sherwood uh who uh max miller points out plays with a ccm stick um just kind of stuck in the middle there with so um yeah other than the defense i thought you know yeah, about the same that we, we've kind of seen. Um, as for our dude, um, Capo Kakinen, 
Uh, three goals against on 34 shots, so 31 saves on 34 shots. Expected goals against was 305, so exactly what you'd expect. 0.912 uh, save percentage. Um, three high danger saves on three high danger shots. Uh, 16 mid danger saves on 17 mid danger shots, and then 12 low danger saves on 14 low danger shots. So Sharks again, kind of doing a solid job, at least kind of keeping things out from the crease there, uh, trying to make his life a little bit easier. Um, but I thought Kakanen played pretty well uh, in him. He did make that one save. There was that one save where he's like, it looked like it was, for when you watch the original, or the initial like shot, it looked like it, it just kind of like hit the post and slid across. Uh, but no, he diving blocker save and the, the puck just kind of squirts across the, the crease there. But uh, Kakadin has been really, really good. Um, and again, going to have a lot of interesting offers, I think, for what the Sharks do with, with Capo Kakadin and heading to the trade deadline. So uh, we'll check in on the Barracudas weekend as they drop both their games uh, this weekend. But they're scrappy, at least. So we'll talk about that here in just one second. It's past the halfway point of the season, Sharks fans, and I know it has been a grind this year. Uh, regardless of the Sharks' current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleepers are our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, and especially Daily Fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick uh, your favorite players in the NHL, whether they're studs like McDavid, Crosby, or McKinnon, or some of your favorite Sharks players like Philip Sedina, Slippery Pete, or Mikel Granlin. Record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Sharks fans. You can win a 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. To start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big, Use promo code locked on NHL. You'll get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers' terms of use for details and locational availability. All right. Uh, the Barracuda, who dropped both their games this weekend, unfortunately, but uh, they are very much shorthanded right now. Um, Shakir Mukumajulin is week to week with a upper body injury, but it doesn't, it sounds like it'll be on the shorter end of the week to week, if that makes sense. So um, hopefully maybe back by next weekend, if not. So um, Daniel Gushin, who's been out since before the all-star game, um, another tough uh, there. Uh, Tristan Robbins, who's been out now too. Like the, the Barracuda are just kind of running out of bodies, but they have been getting contributions from kind of the older guys like uh, Nathan Todd, Scott Sabrin, those type of players. And Thomas Borlo continues to play well. He had two more goals this weekend, uh, both of them on, on the power play. But the Cuda just kind of running out of time here. As I did. Their playoff chances are basically dead at this point, um, unfortunately. But, you know, that that's the discussion for another day. But, um, you know, I think... You have to be, I think one of the big things we'll, we'll talk about kind of the young players and then get into um, McDonald is his kind of uh, impact so far. But, you know, I think Borlo continues to play well. You still see a lot of some of the kind of same messages, um, same issues where maybe trying a little bit too much here and there, trying to make that one play instead of, you know, like the coaches say, make that simple play. Um, but again, I'm, I still think Borlo deserves to be playing some NHL time here uh, sooner rather than later. Again, I don't think, I think the Borlo as a center is dead. Um, I know there's still a lot of Sharks fans who think he's going to be, I don't think, I think he's going to be a winger for, for the Sharks um, going forward. And again, he's been playing exclusively on the wing with the Barracuda. Um, it would just be weird to kind of, oh, okay, you've been playing on the the wing all season and the bear could come up and play with center with the Sharks, even if they are a little bit uh, desperate for potential centers. Um, but 
I think that we hopefully we'll see Bortolo come up and play at some point, especially with the Barracuda season uh, winding down when it comes to uh, actually like realistic playoff chances. So um, yeah, Bortolo is up to 11 goals uh, and 14 assists this year for 25 points in 32 games. Um, not too bad. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a lot of the kind of older guys like your Nathan Todd's, your Cole Castles, um, those guys kind of, pulling the load right now and two guys i really want to kind of highlight um is redeem shimmick and then um jacob mcdonald jacob mcdonald's an absolute monster uh back there like he had himself a really nice weekend um this this weekend and you can see why you know the sharks put him on weight like mike Gris said we you know we wanted to get him down there to help kind of carry the load without Mukuma doing around. Um, and McDonald's been, you know, he's been a good soldier for, for the sharks and kind of right. Whatever they've asked, he's, they've asked him to do, he's done. Right. And you haven't heard any complaints or anything like that. You know, he's played a lot of forward this year. He's played defenseman. He's going down the AHL kind of uh, helping to stabilize the, the, the defense down there. Um, and again, like I wouldn't, I would be very happy to keep, Jacob McDonald in this in the if you know if you want to try to kind of keep him around sign him to another uh kind of two-way contract type of situation and have him play if he doesn't get traded or if he doesn't want to go anywhere else but um I would be very happy to kind of keep him around to help him foster some of these young defensemen because um he's been again just kind of a, a good guy to have around um the redeem Shimmick I think has been playing really really well as well down with the Barracuda I think it's kind of embrace that role again as that mentor, right? Um, Henry Thrun talked about when his time down in the, the AHL, how much Schmidt kind of helped him get him ready to go play NHL games uh, again. And, um, you know, it's it's not an easy job, right, to kind of for these guys who are, you know, on, on 30 and kind of dealing with some younger guys. I, it's, I think it's 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 a hard mentality to kind of, know what your role is for that of like my job is to help best help the franchise by helping these younger guys get ready and you know try to play good hockey try to play you know kind of be that mentor and, and role model for some of these guys so um i just again you can see their importance and i think they've helped to kind of solidify um the back end which was definitely a big problem beginning of the season i think the back of the blue line has been playing much better but you know the kudos problem right now is they just don't have a lot of they're just missing so many guys, right? Like Daniel Gushin, who's a huge scorer and was, you know, the first half of the season was was the Barracuda's most valuable player. He's been out. You know, Shakir Mukodon, who's been amazing this year with the Barracuda, you know, he's out. Tristan Robbins, who's, I, you know, I, I think this year is going to be just kind of a, a lost year for Robbins with all the injuries. But, like, you're just missing so many players, uh, so many young players, and it's just it's a, it's tough for for the Barracuda right now. And I think um, it's going to probably get even tougher here as as the um, trade deadline probably ravages both the the Sharks and the Barracuda here, um, as as it kind of should. As you know, you're trying to make the most out of whatever you have. But um, yeah, I'm just I'm kind of curious to see what happens. Uh, with, with this Barracuda team as you're trying to make the most out of it. So um, overall, I thought the goalies played pretty well this weekend. So we continue to have Corona and Romanov kind of tag teaming it. Um, you know, I know they they both kind of gave up a few goals here, but you can, can at least see the flashes of like, okay, there there's potentially something here when uh, as you continue to, to go forward. So um and then I wanted to shout out Anthony Vincent, who looks like he's going to be a, a really fun AHL player. So um, he's been playing really well since his his return uh, from his, uh, I think Nick Nolenberger said yeah, that he broke his collarbone. So that's why he missed like four months. Uh, but he's been playing really well since his return. And uh, I'd like to kind of see what he can continue to do on this Barracuda team. So just kind of that skilled kind of, grinder type of player i guess but uh he's been fun so um that's gonna be it for me today we'll be back tomorrow uh where ben jordan 
uh, joins and we talk about uh, Liam Greentree. Uh, so we're going to start kind of looking at some of these middle of the first round picks, uh, what to do with, with the Penguins pick potentially. So um, we're going to say a good fun profile on, on him. So make sure you guys are following wherever you get podcasts. Of course, you can watch on YouTube as well. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. Till tomorrow. Bye, friends.